my name is Phil Jansen. I'm working with Mike on his campaign. And just want to start by saying thank you all for coming out here tonight. Uh, we appreciate your support for this campaign. It's, as you know, it's a monumental campaign year. And it's very important to get the right guy in the right spot. And as I've been telling people I'm talking to, we need to get people in Olympia with experience, not going to get experience. So I thank you for coming. Um, if I could bring up Val, he'd like to start us off with the invocation. I'd like to introduce Matt Van Hook. He's a veteran in our area, sergeant uh, in the Army, recently uh, returned to the area. Matt, if you would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Flag is to my front. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Matt. Thank you all. And now I'd like to introduce and most of you, probably everybody except me, has known uh, Sheriff Knezovich for years. And I'd like to bring him up to say a few remarks uh, to introduce Mike. Sheriff Knezovich. Well, welcome to this event for Mike. I've known Mike for quite a long time. We uh, actually were on uh, an election cycle in 2006 together, and we saw each other on that trail often. A lot of people ask me why I'm supporting Mike, uh, and quite frankly, a lot of people have asked if I do endorse. I won't. Mike is the candidate for this job for multiple reasons. One of which, he has life experience. He knows what, it, what it's like to be a working person. He knows what it's like to go out and get his education while he's working, raising a family. He knows what it's like to live and struggle and move forward. I really respect that in Mike. Mike is probably one of the, one of the most educated individuals I know when it comes down to finances. Uh, he helps uh, me out quite often. And the other aspect of the reason I, I support Mike is he's always been there for me. And I appreciate that, Mike, I do. Uh, it's, it's been a pleasure having you around. But the most important aspect is the qualifications to do the job. Folks, I really worry about America sometimes because we seem to elect people that were other people's political help and we put them into elected office and we wonder why we have this thing called an establishment. <laughs> That's how the establishment is formed. We don't go and look for good candidates. We don't go and look for those people that have done the job or have lived life and have built those credentials after all these years of doing the things that he has done, raising a family, working, helping Rob with the, the, the treasurer's office, Mike has that experience needed to do this job. And Mike is concerned about us, not his next political career. Mike's concerned about us, people, not establishment. So when you take a look at who you're going to be supporting or, or you know, when people ask you why support Mike, that's why. He cares about you, the person, not the political machine. So Mike, it's my great pleasure to bring you up because I have to go out to another event and represent you. So why don't you come up and I'll head that way. All right, thank you, Sheriff. Onward and upward, you have a mission. So, uh, you know, it's really great when you have the Sheriff come to you and endorse you enthusiastically and he says, tell me what you want and I will do it. I guarantee if I called him up and said, let's go put up signs, he would help. So I would, I would be remiss if I didn't introduce a couple other elected officials. Uh, first of all, my boss, Rob Chase, uh, Spokane County Treasurer. Um, 
another guy who's been out putting up signs, knocking on doors, and doing whatever I've asked in, in helping me get this done. Also, uh, we have uh, Bob McCaslin from the 4th District, uh, representative. Uh, Matt Shea from the 4th District, most... Looks, and, and John Ahern, the legendary John Ahern, the map from the myth, the legend. Uh, six district state representative. So it's a pleasure to have John here. I've known John, I think, a little longer than I knew the sheriff. I think, uh, when did you first run, John? 04? 2000. Okay, well, sometime in there I, I met you helping out on your campaign way back when, so uh, even before when I ran. And, and, and John has a unique privilege. He was either the first or the second elected official ever to endorse me uh, when I ran for auditor in 2006. So thank you for being here, John. So am I missing any other elected officials that I didn't see slipping? Okay. So we got that covered, that checked off. So why am I running? And I think the, the, the sheriff um, kind of nailed it. I, I'm concerned about our community. I'm concerned about our state. I'm concerned about Spokane County. And when we look around, there's a lot of issues and a lot of problems facing the state. And I think, you know, we, we, we can talk about education, we can talk about infrastructure, but the number one thing that we really need to talk about is how we're gonna get jobs into Washington State. Because right now our tax code is so punitive, our regulatory environment so oppressive that uh, business, they don't wanna come here. And the businesses that are here wanna leave. They're looking at Idaho, they're looking at other states and other places. And I'll give you a great example. Get on I-90, head east, hit the border and look up on the hill and what do you see? Cabela's. Does everybody know where that was supposed to be? Spokane Valley. Spokane Valley. That was supposed to be in Liberty Lake or Spokane Valley. And when you think about it, Cabela's wouldn't tell me how much money they had in gross sales. But the Walmart next to them, uh, the average Walmart is, is $50 million a year. If that Walmart's in Washington State, that's four and a half million dollars in sales tax revenue alone. So maybe double that for Cabela's? I don't know. Uh, so we're losing a lot because of our punitive business environment. It's highly destructive um, to the businesses that we have and recruiting businesses. Cabela's is not alone, by the way. Buck Knives, everybody know about Buck Knives? They were gonna be in Washington too, and they said, no thanks, we'll take a pass. And you look at, uh, there's a, a furniture manufacturer, a trailer manufacturer, I think a biomed company or two, and more and more. And when you look at some of those stores, not only are we not getting them into Spokane County, uh, we actually drive to go shop there, go through a Cabela's parking lot on the weekend. I did this once, I counted the license plate, about half of them, half of them were from Washington State. So not only are we losing that tax income and those jobs and that prosperity, we're actually exporting our tax dollars into Idaho because we all go shop out there. And more and more people are doing that. They'll go out to Cabela's, they'll hit Walmart's, Costco, the gas station. If they drink and smoke, they'll pick up cigarettes and booze. And then they'll come back into Washington State and go home. Uh, so I think we can do better, and there's a few ways, and I won't get too wonkish on the tax code of Washington State, but I've spent the um, better part of a decade and a half familiarizing myself uh, with the tax structure in Washington State. Uh, to suffice to say, it, it is highly, highly punitive against business, and it's getting worse so. And when I get to Olympia, I will, I will be able to hit the ground running, I will be able to understand what changes need to be made, and I will be advocate, advocating for small businesses in a big way, and big businesses, because we need those jobs. You, you know, the, the, the key to any sort of, of society is, is economy. We need a strong economy. We need to be, uh, have growth and opportunity for all of our citizens in Spokane County. And we talk about, you know, things like living wages and economic development, but really a living wage is a function of a flat job market, right? If there was jobs in Spokane and there was competitive pressure for labor, wages would go up. And when you, when you ask businesses, what do they look for? What do they look for in a community? Well, they look for um, an educated and eager workforce. We, we've got that. They look for colleges. We've got that. They look for hospitals and infrastructure and good schools. We've got that. But at the end of the day, business aren't, aren't coming to Spokane. 
they're not, and, and we need to do better. And Spokane's really in a unique situation. We're not insulated like the Puget Sound is. So we can do better. And what does that do? That lifts up everybody. That lifts up the community and gives people uh, more and more opportunity. And it helps with our education. It helps fund our, our infrastructure and other essential services. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, the main reason I'm running. I guess in a sentence, in, in three or four words, the bottom line is we can do better. We deserve better. And, and it, we, through hard work, uh, can get this done. It's going to be a tumultuous um, you know, next session in the House. So I think um, having somebody uh, with a little bit of experience and background probably would be a, a benefit to the county and the area. So for those that don't know a little bit about myself, um, I have an MBA from Gonzaga, CPA, double major in accounting and finance. I spent the last 15 years working in, in the public sector uh, in finance. And so I think I have the skills, I know I have the skills to go over there and, and help uh, advocate for Spokane County. Uh, finally, finally, um, my family uh, is here tonight. It's one of the rare occasions that uh, I want to bring them to these events. So where is, where's my, where's my wife? Oh, there's my son, James. My wife, Diane. My, do my daughter, Elisa. My, my other daughter, Christina, is working. And so, honestly, without their support, I would never even contemplate uh, doing this. Those were the first uh, four endorsements that I needed to, to move forward on this. And, and, and many of you have heard this, and some of you will probably think I'm giving myself too much credit, but I've, I've said to many of you, my wife's my better three-fourths, and I'm probably giving myself too much credit. Scott, Scott Wetzel gets it, yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, I just want to end with, with uh, thanking you for coming. I think there's a lot of hard work. I'm putting in a lot of hard work and getting this campaign going. So I appreciate you being here. I appreciate your support. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mike's actually given me way too much credit to be three quarters, one quarter. It's more like seven eighths, one eight as far as who's better. But uh, I've known Mike for over a decade. I had the pleasure of first meeting him. I think Mike it was at a sixth grade uh, offsite grade school camp where uh, he was hard selling like a NFL agent, his son James as the next coming of Walter Jones uh, from the Seahawks. And if you all look at him now, you can see why. I mean, he was almost that big when he was in sixth grade. And my son, Andy, was the quarterback for the team. And as we all know, the single second highest paid person in the NFL to the quarterback is the left tackle. And so I quickly realized that we needed to have uh, James doing that. And that was my introduction to Mike. And then that was going into sixth grade. It was, yeah, sixth grade, right, James? Sixth? Yeah, sixth grade. And ever since then, I've just gotten to know Mike more and more and more. He's a tremendous family man. He's a very astute business person and is incredibly analytical when he needs to be and has the ability to jump out of his own analytics to get to the real world of how things operate. And so when he came to me and said, would you be willing to help out a little bit, I, I didn't even hesitate. It was an absolute yes, donated right away, which is kind of my part here because I get the envious task of the ask. Uh, but that's okay because I'm used to doing that. Um, so it wasn't even a hesitation, but then I started thinking, well, we need to be able to do more because personally, my wife and I were strong conservatives. We've had our fill over the last eight years of a junior senator that had no experience in what he's done up in the White House. And then we take a look at our current governor, Inslee, and he was a career and is a career politician. And he's just slowly but surely and quickly taken this state right into the uh, tubes. And so we have to change that. And I had the pleasure of meeting with a gentleman who's running for governor, Bill Bryant. He shares the exact same philosophies as, as Mike does. Mike and I were actually at that event. So I think we have to get back to sanity. We ha I'm a small business owner. We have to get back to just running our organizations like small businesses. What makes sense to do fiscally? What makes sense from experience? And drawing on those experiences to make this place, this wonderful area that we live in. I travel all over the country. There's nothing like the Northwest. There's nothing like Eastern Washington. 
And we've got to be able to maintain that growth and we've got to bring businesses which brings jobs back in. So that's why I'm personally endorsing Mike. That's why my wife Tracy is. And so what I'd like to do tonight is we all need to help Mike get to the next level. We all need to donate. So anything you can offer, doesn't matter, $25, $100, what, it doesn't matter. Anything you can get because the more Mike generates in revenue, income, and donations, the more legitimate he's going to be perceived to the people who don't know him the way I know him. And we can show that and by getting support. And I will guarantee you, those who have endorsed his competitor as of now will not be doing that down the road. I can absolutely com convince you of that. And the last thing is, is we have to take a look at his competitor. There's nothing wrong. He's a very nice kid, I'm sure. Kid. 26, has never done anything out of college other than work in a political establishment. He's never sold a product for a living. He's never been in straight commission sales. He's never balanced uh, P&L. He's never done any of those things. And that doesn't make him a bad guy. It just means he's not ready yet. So he might be way, way, way down the road tomorrow ready for the position, but there's no way he's ready right now. And Mike is ready today. And so I would just ask you, look to the generosity of yourselves, look to keep the movement moving forward, and anything is a thousand percent better than what it was 10 minutes ago, which was nothing. So thank you very much, and let's get out there and get this done for Mike. Thank you. Thanks a great deal, Scott. Just one last speaker I'd like to bring up, Rob Chase. Um, he doesn't know I'm going to do this, but I want him to let you know how you can help if you're like me and Rob will tell you the same thing. If you don't have a hundred, fifty, even a thousand dollars sitting around to contribute to a campaign, I want Rob to talk to you a little bit about how else you can help. Well thank you, Phil. Um, does any how many people here have an extra thousand dollars on them? Oh. Well I don't. But um, you know what you can do if you don't have an extra thousand dollars on you, the equivalent of that is walk in your precinct and it probably takes about eight hours. You know, some people join fitness clubs. They do the same thing on a treadmill. Well, you can get out and meet your neighbors, you know, if you're in that precinct. Or, and it's really not, it's actually kind of fun once you get going. It's summer, a lot of nice evenings, you know. You put a, you know, maybe an hour or so in an evening and then a couple on a weekend. And before you know it, you're, you're finished a precinct. And that's the equivalent of $1,000, I think. And we can do that. You know, Mike doesn't have the money that um, Ian has. You know, Ian's already got a head start and he's sort of an anointed person but you know we've got to have Mike there it's important not whether you live in the sixth district or not but for the whole effort in Olympia I think he would join Matt Shea and um, Bob McCaslin and other luminaries there and we would turn this this um, uh, whole state upside down from the way it has been we've, we would turn it in a whole different direction and Mike has a stamina to do that he's the only person to know who has actually finished War and Peace and that that really that really impressed me and I hired him as soon as I found that out. So I think there's a sign up sheet if you know give what you can but also uh, I know if we can doorbell uh, all these precincts. I've doorbelled a couple so far. I intend on doorbelling a couple more. Same with Tony Kippy and a few others but if we could get them all doorbelled that would be an automatic victory for Mike both in the primary and the general. So uh, consider it. Thank you and do it for the effort. God bless you all. Thanks, Rob. And we're done talking. I think there's still some pizza left. And please, if you haven't had a chance to say hi to Mike, uh, grab his hand on, on your way out if you're leaving. And uh, again, thank you all for coming. We really appreciate your support. And just the fact that you're here is an encouragement to Mike to keep going hard on this campaign. So thank you very much.
you sign up on our volunteer.